beat on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody. Welcome to the Beat on Bits podcast. This is the show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people. My name is Brandon and I'm your host. I'm a software developer and a DJ. Former DJ now, which I'll explain a little bit later. But I thought I would use this episode after quite a long hiatus to share a couple motivational tips with you out there. I've been using these myself to push myself to progress further in my own passions and projects, and maybe you can make use of them too. These two things that I've been using to motivate myself are why you should not wait for the perfect moments or until you obtain perfection in something, and why you should not have somebody else as your role model. So why should you not wait for the perfect moments? Why should you not wait until that thing you're working on is absolutely perfect before you release it to your target audience or set it free into the world? So here's the thing about waiting for the perfect moment. By waiting for the perfect moment or waiting for something to be perfect, you're limiting yourself and potentially putting off the beginning or the start of what this thing allows you to do until it's too late rather than just putting it out until you feel mostly ready, maybe slightly uncomfortable, a little bit fearful and nervous, but objectively you know that it's good and you know that you have the capacity to start it. So by doing this, you may be foregoing your grand vision of what the perfect start or beginning looks like. But by doing this, you afford yourself the opportunity to create something to follow that up with that could potentially be even grander than whatever your initial vision was, because there's no better feedback than the real world and nothing is ever going to be perfect. So give yourself some leeway and just get it out there. Just go do your thing. You'll get feedback along the way. And the second thing is why you should not have somebody else as your role model. So you may discover something about somebody that you totally idolize, somebody that your role model is that might discourage you from pursuing what they have or something that they've done. Now, nobody is perfect. And depending on, I guess, your stomach, you can take different things uh, and handle different discoveries in different ways about somebody else. But to kind of bypass that whole risk, even though depending on how you look at it, it's barely a risk at all. But really, you're not going to be able to replicate somebody else perfectly or even in the way that you imagine it. So I think that it's better to use your own vision of your future self as your role model and think to yourself and ask yourself on a regular basis, is what I'm doing now or what I've been doing recently helping create my vision of my future self? Is what you're doing and, and how you approach things and your attitude towards everything indicative of someone that you want to be and someone who has the things that you want to have? And if not, then it's okay to just stop for a second and ask yourself what needs to change in order for you to fix that. And I think that this is a little bit more powerful than fantasizing or idolizing somebody else and just looking at them from afar in awe and wondering how on earth you can get there. So by using your own vision of your future self and what you want to have and what you want to be like and the kind of person you want to be, the answers become a lot clearer because you can see a destination or at least some blurry image of one, but at least you have a direction and you can adjust your course slightly day by day as you make your way there, however far along down the road that might be. These are some things that I've been thinking about to keep myself on track. And one of these things that I envision my future self to have is accountability for my own actions and accountability for things that I say. So I'm going to start practicing what I'm mentally preaching.
by sharing these goals with more people, including you right here, right now, so that I have something to keep pushing myself forward with. And the things that I'm working towards now, and even for the past little while, is learning more Korean. So my ultimate goal is to be almost fluent as a native Korean speaker. And that's just something that I want to do really for myself, like my wife and her family, they're all Korean. And I've dabbled in languages like for years now. So I do know bits of Cantonese, Mandarin, Japanese, and Korean, but nowhere near fluent in any of them. So I figure now's a good time uh, as any to really focus on one until I get to a proficiency that I'm really comfortable with before kind of dabbling in more and just really taking my attention and focus off one specific direction, which for this, in this case, is learning more Korean. So that's number one for me in terms of language learning. And what I mentioned back at the beginning of this episode, in order to free up some more time for this goal and some other goals that I'll mention in a bit too, is I always took on a few DJ gigs here and there, and it didn't seem like a big deal and I can make some extra cash on the side, but really it's good cash for the day, but for the week or two weeks or even various meetings up until the day of the event that I'm DJing, usually a wedding, that time kind of equals out and makes it not feel worth it to me because I'm taking time away from these other things that I want to do to improve myself rather than put all this time and effort into building playlists and um, practicing some fancy transitions and scritchy scratchies to impress an audience for one evening and probably people that I'll never see again for the most part because that's how it's been. So I'm kind of hanging up my headphones, so to speak, uh, for now, and just DJing for people that I know personally and people that I'm close friends with. So if you are one of those people, you can still hit me up to DJ your wedding <laughs> if that's something that's coming up or something on your mind or just a party here or there. But ultimately, I'm not taking on any more DJ gigs and not recording any more mixes. It was fun while it lasted for a few years, but yeah, I'm gonna hang up the headphones for now and maybe come back to it in the future, we'll see, but probably not anytime soon. So, so that's that. The next thing that I'm focusing more of my efforts on now, and actually the reason why I've taken such a long break from podcasting and this show is software development. So I'm a programmer by day, and Batman by night. No, I'm also a programmer by night. As disappointing as that sounds. <laughs> so what do I mean by this? I've taken on side jobs for quite a few months now. And I worked on this one that was targeting uh, a certain subsection of the Canadian cannabis industry. But Due to its uh, recent legalizations and various regulations from province to province, where we are kind of doesn't work with the regulations for what the intent of this app I was developing was. So that kind of got shelved for now. And the same guys who kind of contracted me to build that app for them came up with another concept that I'm working on now. And instead of just getting flat paid out for it, like a contractor, I am taking a partial ownership stake in this one because this one I think has much more potential and is not going to fall victim to these kind of regulations so easily. And I'm keeping under wraps for now, unfortunately, until we have some, some more traction, we'll say. But it's in a decent place right now in that I can show a proof of concept to potential uh, customers. And so far the feedback has actually been pretty good. So that's exciting and really encouraging and I'm gonna keep working at that. So it's gonna be a little bit tough to balance essentially starting up a business outside of work and doing fun things that I enjoy doing such as podcasting, such as martial arts and Muay Thai, which 
I've missed my last three weeks of classes because I've been sick and coughing. Um, but you know what? I'm going to make it happen because this is something that my future vision of myself would have done. And so that's what I'm doing in order for me to get there. Yeah, it sounds a little bit twisty because I'm like talking to my future self in the third person and it's a little bit weird, but that's kind of the angle that I'm taking. And so far it's worked to kind of motivate me and not drive me crazy with uh, balancing so many things at the same time. So hopefully you can use these, these two things uh, if we do a little bit of a recap here. One being not to wait for the perfect moment before you start something that you want to start and two, not having somebody else as your ideal role model. Use your future self as your ideal role model and regularly ask yourself, is what I'm doing helping me get to where I want to go and get me closer to my vision of my future self? And if no, ask yourself what you need to do in order to fix that. Simple as that. So those are my passions, projects, and well, we didn't really touch on the playlist, but I touched on a bit of DJing stuff, so that'll count for now. So those are my passions and projects and playlists for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I would love to know if you took away anything from this episode. And if you did, let me know, leave a comment, and we can um, carry on the discussion there. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.